she said, well, the sack looks good, the baby does not. Honestly, nothing could have prepared me for the weight of those words in that moment. There was concern that if I tried to just take something or pass the baby at home, that, that I might have trouble and have to be transported and all of that. It just wasn't something that seemed like a very good option. And so we decided to go to the hospital, get checked in there, and go through the process of the DNC. Reality TV fans may know of Jessica Duggar Seawall from the show 19 Kids and Counting. The show followed her religious and famously anti-abortion Arkansas family throughout the 2000s. Duggar recently shared on YouTube that she was recovering from a DNC, that is a common medical procedure used in cases of dangerous, unwanted, or non-viable pregnancies. It removes tissue from inside your uterus, meaning a DNC is literally an abortion. Duggar didn't say that part, saying only that she had a miscarriage. The heartbreak and risks of miscarriage are profound for anybody. But Duggar is also someone who, in 2014, said that abortion is the holocaust of our time. The admission has put a spotlight on how privilege determines who is able to receive this kind of care, something that is increasingly difficult to do, even with so-called exceptions in place. Those women and girls who are not so lucky include the 10-year-old rape survivor who had to cross state lines for an abortion, and a woman whose miscarriage left her bleeding profusely, only to be sent home from the ER and told to wait. Meanwhile, in Texas, conservatives are making good on their promise to make a, the abortion pill even more difficult to obtain. One Texas judge, a Trump appointee, is set to rule on a lawsuit that seeks to restrict access to one of the two drugs typically used to induce a medicated abortion nationwide. Joining me now is former Texas State Senator Wendy Davis, uh, the new senior advisor of Planned Parenthood Texas Votes, the nonpartisan policy advocacy and political arm for Planned Parenthood affiliates in the state. Um, Wendy Davis, it's always great to talk with you. The, the Duggar case is interesting in that, you know, what she described as a DNC is an abortion, and yet she characterized it as a miscarriage. I wonder if even that, if anybody who wasn't last named Duggar was to try to get the same procedure, if they could even legally get that in Texas. You know, Joy, we've always known that when these abortion bans went into place in Texas and elsewhere, abortion was going to become something that privileged people could access and others could not. And honestly, I'm glad that she was able to get the care that she needed. But the point is that everyone should be able to get that care. And what's happening on the ground in Texas today, doctors are absolutely terrified to provide needed care, even if arguably it fits an exception in the law. Because if they are penalized um, as having carried out an illegal abortion in the state of Texas, that means up to life in prison for them. And it's stopping doctors even from providing miscarriage management, true miscarriage management, to patients who are needing that kind of care and creating such a terrible and desperate situation for people all over our state and in other states where abortion is now prohibited. Uh, and just to go through what the gut marker institute has to say about Texas, it is one of the most restrictive states. Patients are forced to make two trips um, even when they could get an abortion. Use of Medicaid and private health insurance is banned. Parental consent is required for a minor. Medication abortion is severely restricted. Um, when you go to Texas, before Roe was overturned in June of 2022, there were 17,000 uh, procedures. Um, after Roe, it went down to 74. So they have, in the state of Texas, essentially ended abortion care, but that has not ended crisis pregnancies. That has not meant women are still not in medical emergencies where they need a DNC. It's just that now women have to essentially be bleeding to death before a doctor will care for them, right? That's exactly right. And, you know, one of the things that's become so clear in all of this, Joy, is that this was never really about abortion. In fact, right now, the attorney general in Texas is literally trying to sue 
Planned Parenthood and the help and the health care that it provides to patients across this state every single day out of existence, because that's the point. And they're also, as you pointed out a moment ago, trying to block the use of mifepristone, not only in Texas, but in every single state in this country. And what we've known for a long time here in Texas is that this is ground zero for this fight. And whatever is happening here, I promise you, it is going to come to your state, even if you think right now it's not. And that's why we all have to be in this fight together, supporting organizations like Planned Parenthood, Texas Votes, and others who are fighting every day to restore the kind of care that Texans and others in this country need every single day. And I want to talk about this issue of exceptions, because that, you know, Republicans sort of the, their PR is that, oh, no, don't worry, we have exceptions. Uh, this is the map of the states, 26 states that supposedly have exceptions. But here's the problem. Ms. Magazine reports as follows. Exceptions function mainly as PR tools to make abortion bans seem less cruel than they are and distract from the inhumanity ban itself. But because, because the issue is, if, for instance, there's a rape exception, they make it very difficult for you to uh, use it because they're like, well, you have to have reported it in this amount of time. Uh, if it's an, in, a rape inside the family, women might not have reported it at all. They make it so hard to use the exceptions that the exceptions actually don't work. Have you seen a case in which exceptions actually help a woman get the abortion care she needs? I personally do not know of a case like that in Texas right now. And I suppose if the statistics that you read earlier are correct, it appears that maybe some have been able to get that care. But let's face it, we've been working on the issue of rape um, and trying to solve that issue in states like Texas for a long time. Meanwhile, we've had thousands of rape kit tests sitting on evidence room shelves, not addressing that because women are not believed. And so if they're not believed in the instance of prosecuting a rape case, how are they going to believe, be believed as a rape exception to an abortion ban? These exceptions, like you said a minute ago, they're really just window dressing to make these bans look more acceptable, but they're absolutely not working in practice. And we feared that they wouldn't. And unfortunately, right now, what that means is for the one in three women who live in a state that bans abortion care across this country, they are not able to get the care that they currently need. And yeah. this is a fight we all need to be in together and working, of course, to make sure, as we are here at Planned Parenthood Texas Votes, to assure that every person can get their health care and that they can yeah. live the full and vibrant life that they deserve.